Welcome to Oak Pavilion, where tonight the College of Alameda Cougars come into town and take on the Columbia College Claim Jumpers in the first round of the state NorCal playoffs. I'm Jeremy Tuttle along with Chris Babcock tonight, play-by-play. -play. Chris, welcome up to Sonora for the second round of the playoffs. 
Again, Alameda comes into the game after they beat College of San Mateo on Wednesday night, 99 to 80. Columbia had a bye in the first round, so they can move into the second round and host the game tonight. January 22nd was a big date for Alameda. They lost that day, ugly game. They were 9-11 and 11 and asked Coach Collins, what, were, what happened after that game? So it was pissed, but we realized, you know, we got to go out and have some fun. So they've gone out, and we both know, coaching and playing, winning is fun. They've won nine games since, and there's some wins there against some teams that are still in the playoffs. So they've put things together, and it's gone through their low post offense, putting the ball inside. That's how Alameda beat CSM on Wednesday, and that's how they're going to attempt to stay in that game and beat Columbia tonight. Yeah, you brought up inside play. You're going to see a contrast in styles tonight where Columbia, we all know they like to shoot the three-point shot. Where CSM, they're going to feed the ball inside to Jeremiah Stamps and, and basically ride him. As he goes, so goes the College of Alameda. 31 points against San Mateo, like you said, uh, led the way for the Cougars in route to the victory in the first round of the playoffs. He was more successful than I am at the ice cream buffet. He was 13 of 14 from the field. I usually go about 12 of 14 in flavors and sprinkles, etc. The only where he struggled, he was 5 of 13 from the free throw line. But yes, Jeremy, you're correct. Jeremiah Stamps is literally putting his stamp on this offense for Alameda. It's going to be interesting to see him go up against the number one shot blocker in the state and the nation, Caleb Carter. Huge matchup there, averages 4.4 blocks per game. Only comes in the game with 123 blocks in the season. Gosh darn it, that's why I'm here because I heard they're serving back Wilson Burgers hot in a lot of ways. They're on the here. grill. They're on the grill ready to go <laughs> for the claim jumpers. And one thing knowing coming into this place, their average margin of victory is 22 points. But I think it's an advantage for Alameda having played here. They did lose in a close game, but playing here in December and knowing the feel for this place, it'll be a great atmosphere and looking forward to a great game. Absolutely. Once you've seen it once, it's, it's a little easier to come in here. and It's not the luster that you see when you, know, when you come for the first time, see the golf ball environment and the crowd. This main broadcast is brought to you by David Goldenberg for District 1 Supervisor. Vote for change. Vote for proven experience. Vote for David. Jerron Brandon for District 5 Supervisor. StoreQuest Express Self Storage. Get your first month's rent for only a dollar. Canapa and Sons Drilling and Pumps. Providing well drilling and pump installation service for over 30 years. Royce Davis Custom Painting. And we'll be back after these messages on NorCal Sports TV. Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches. Contact us today.
So again, the College of Alameda Cougars coming to the game 18-11, 10-6 under head coach Marshall Collins, averaging 76.4 points per game, giving up 71.9. But in their nine-game winning streak, they're averaging 85 points a game, which is nine above their average. They play in the Bay Valley Conference, and their away record this year is 7-5. and five. On the other side, Columbia College comes in 25-3 and three with a record of 11-3 and three in Central Valley Conference play. 15-1 and one here at home. Huge home court advantage like we talked about earlier. Only loss this year comes to Fresno City, 81-75. And they've won six in a row, so they're playing good basketball, and I think with the better coaches, when you have that break, you really get to hone in on yourself, self-scout, and then being in seeing that you've got Alameda get a couple of days prepared. This broadcast is brought to you in part by David Goldenberg for District 1 Supervisor. David Goldenberg is a proven fire manager with 35 years of Cal Fire experience. He is an expert on fire preparedness. David concludes his career as a statewide deputy chief of command and control where he managed large complex budgets. Vote for change, vote for proven experience, vote for David. So Keys tonight talking to Coach Hoyt for Columbia. Win the war in the key, find the rhythm, rhythm offensively. Alameda will throw a lot of different looks at them defensively and defend. Give them, make it hard on Alameda. Going to have to defend the paint. Keys for Alameda. Win the war in the paint, limit turnovers. And as we mentioned several times, pound the ball inside. Little post play tonight for Alameda. Columbia white uniforms, red numbers outlining gold, while Alameda comes in with black uniforms with beautiful little cougar on the front and blue numbers outlined in white. Columbia wins the top tip. Working it down low to Coddington. Goes up, gets a friendly roll. First two points of the night for Coddington. He had 20 against Alameda, so he likes playing against that dark blue jersey. Alameda goes down low, just like they said they would. Shot up, back iron, no good. Rebound comes off to Spivey. Coddington, great help down in the post. Drop pass for Spivey, three-point shot comes up short. Rebound comes off to Carper, though, controlling it for Columbia. Alameda, one of the better rebounding teams, but when you have those threes, those long threes, you've got to be prepared for that. Alameda comes in the game averaging 37.7 rebounds per game. Columbia... 42, so that's a big thing to look at tonight. Who can control the boards? Three-point shot on the way up and good by Carper. His, it's his first of the night. Columbia up 5-0 here early. Columbia playing with a lot of confidence, sharing the basketball, and 15-1 at home, showing early on why they've had that success. Yao outside, doesn't go. Rebound comes off the to Bartley for Columbia. Early so thank you note from the claim jumpers. Thank you for shooting that three. One and done both possessions on the offensive side for Alameda. That shot doesn't go, comes off to Yao. But anything that's going to, with Columbia getting points inside the paint, is going to help their three-point shooting open up tonight. Any, any points in the paint for Columbia is really a bonus because they, they live and die on the three-point line. Baseline drive just comes through. Nine on the shot clock. Shot off high glass, doesn't go. Rebound comes off to Carper. Staying in front, good defense without fouling. Again, one and done. Columbia, three possessions in a row, able to control the glass, but then they turn it over. Coddington kind of got caught there. All conference player for Columbia this season. Three-point shot by the big guy doesn't go. And again, like you said, I think Columbia is more than welcome to let him take that three-point shot. Thank you very much. He's only a 17% free throw or three-point shooter, so he's going to shoot it with Columbia. Let him shoot that all day long. Bartley with that miss. He had 11 points versus Alameda in the first matchup. Melbourne brings it up slowly for the Cougars. Gets it back, working off the screen. 
drives, lays it high off the glass. Again, doesn't go, and Carter comes away with another rebound for Columbia. You know what I like about Connington? Away from the ball, helping defense in that time. Big screen out. No, or he didn't get the rebound, but he's right there to, to block out and be physical. Coddington's shot goes high and, and wide, comes away to the Cougars. And when you see that early on, it means they're focused on the game plan that, that Coach Hoyt put together. Milberg guarded by Cardington. His entry pass is taken away by Columbia. Three on one. Fast break. Dunk. Maru very much. Thank you for Grayson Carper. Four white jerseys versus one dark jersey. Alameda's got to get back on defense. 7-0 run here to start the game. Three-point shot on the way. Wide left. Got out of bounds. Right now everything going Columbia away. And Alameda... The alley and the oop, but Alameda is settling for those three-point shots. And you're really playing into the game plan and the confidence of the claim jumpers early on. Alameda picking up a little pressure here. Columbia breaks it. Cross court over to Carper. Three-point shot. Back rim doesn't go. Rebound comes off to Ding. Good defense for the claim jumpers getting back and finding a guy to guard and get physical with and create another turnover. Nice job there by Carper on the defensive end. Three-point shot on the way from the right wing. Short, almost tipped in by Alameda. And now we have a timeout on the court called by Alameda. Gives a chance to remind you this broadcast is brought to you by Brandon Geron, candidate for Tuolumne County Supervisor District 5. Remind you... The last day to vote is Tuesday, March 3rd. Our county needs new leadership to fight for housing, living wages, and government transparency. So we can keep this a place where our kids can stay, thrive, and start families of their own. Vote for Geron on Tuesday and go Columbia. So Columbia, you see early on how they're practicing, how they prepare for the game defensively, guarding the post, one and done and playing pretty footloose foot loose and, and fancy free on offense. But they're going to win this game playing defense. They're 26 in the state, holding opponents to 70 points a game. See what the Cougars do here out of the timeout. I'm willing to bet they try to go down low. They do. Three seconds in the key. Called on Dwayne Johnson. Turns the ball back over to Columbia, so another good defensive effort there by the claim jumpers. Spivey in particular, guarding the paint, being the uh, warden down there, if you will. Bartley drives, loses control, has it come off to Melberg, and he's on the run. Tries to lay it up off left-hand glass and gets it to go. First two points of the night for the Cougars. Almost 15, five minutes into the game, held to two, zero points till the basket. Flame jumpers working around, looking to feed down low. We get a foul called on Dwayne Johnson. We see the replay here of the left hand layup off the glass. Last time down for Cameron Maybower. Shakes checking into the game. He had nine versus Alameda in the first matchup back in December. And yes, these teams are different, but. It, it, as we mentioned, it helps that you've played an opponent you have some, you're familiar with. There's only a couple of days to prepare for the game. Shake's been a little more active lately, too, for Columbia since the second half of the season. So we'll see here as he gets the ball, drives, lays it up, off the glass, doesn't go, rebound, fought for, and now tied up. Jump ball, call, possession error going to go to Alameda. Nice job there, though, by Carter getting in there, tying the ball up. No second chance opportunities for Columbia. Alameda, although they're Columbia's averaging more rebounds per game, when you look at their versus their opponents, they are out rebounding most of the opponents they, they play, that being the Cougars of Alameda. Got up here about four o'clock today. Three point shot short. Shakes comes away with it. And right now, like you said, Alameda still content to just shoot threes and try and outshoot the claim jumpers. It's one thing, you know, I get shooting the three, not anti-three, you don't love it, but being through a 
a, 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 a paint touch. And here's the last foul. But talking to Marshall Collins for the game. Doesn't mean we're getting everything in the paint, but at least get a paint touch through the offense. But probably four times, no paint touches at all and slinging up the three. Cotty his three-point shot goes in and out. Rebound, no. Tracked down by Carper. Just wanted it more than anybody else in that play. And then Spivey fouled on the drive by Brown. That's the third foul already by Alameda. And, and Carper had 12 points and five assists against Alameda back in December, so had a nice game, showing a lot of hustle and toughness on that last play to get the long offensive rebound. Spivey looking to drive, lays, doesn't go, rebound. Tipped away, gets his own rebound, back iron, no good again. Third time opportunity by Shakes, and he puts it in. So much for no second chance opportunities. Second and third that time, Jeremy. Still not a second chance. It was a third chance, see? So you're still correct. Drive, pull-up jumper, back iron, rebound comes off to Coddington. And again, Alameda has no offensive rebounding here in the first half so far. Spivey on the drive, puts it in. His first two points of the night. And Columbia's up 11-2 here as we go 113 minutes to play. And if you're Alameda, you're not panicking right now, but you want to stay connected on the road. Claim jumpers have blown out a lot of opponents here at home. Brooks Jr. in the game for Alameda. Spin move, shot blocked. Harper comes away with it. First Wilson Burger served back hot. Coddington slows things down for Columbia. Says, okay, we got 20 on the shot clock. That was a big block there by Carter, though. And you can have your struggles offensively if you're playing defense like Columbia is tonight. Three-point shot, short and wide to the right. Rebound comes off to Cameron. He drives, lays it up, left hand, doesn't go. Ball goes out of bounds, last touched by Columbia. Thank you. So Alameda will have it, 23 on the shot clock here. Baseline inbound as Stamps comes back into the game for the Cougars. Brown getting set to trigger the inbound pass. Double team, nice double team there by Columbia on Stamps. Couldn't get inbound pass to him, and then they come away short. Columbia is defending the basket at every opportunity. Shakes, three-point shot short. Gets his own rebound. Gets it over to Bartley, now over to Carper. Carper feeds Carter, goes up with it, doesn't get it to go. And the rebound comes off to the Cougars. Need to go up a little stronger, take a little bit more time, a little more physicality. Now we get an entry pass down low. Back. He doesn't get it to go, a little too strong. And Carter comes away with it as Dwayne Johnson's shot went a little too strong that time. Great help defense from the backside. Throwing that post paint, lob, backside help, strategic play. Spivey rises up, doesn't get the three-point shot to go. And the Cougars come away with it once again as Terrell Brown controls the rebound for the Cougars. He shoots the three-point shot, rattles around, doesn't go, heartbreak. Everything but went in that time for the Cougars. So they scored with five, minute, five minutes into the game and then haven't scored in almost another five minutes. Bartley, he gets it, though. Three-quarters of the way down, doesn't get it to come to all. Gets his own rebound, shot short again, and the Cougars come away with it as it's Dwayne Johnson, and then he dribbles it out of bounds. So it'll get the ball back to the claim jumpers. But you're only down nine. You scored two points in you know nine minutes, and you're down nine. So you're doing some things correctly offensively, just no rhythm or tempo. Bartley to trigger the inbound pass here for Columbia. And we got a turnover. Foul away from the basketball on the entry. The old illegal screen. On Carter. Carter's first, team's first. So yeah, the, the Cougars old, have another shot. Of, good pass block, you know, got his knees down and, 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 and got to the target, but unfortunately we're in the wrong sport. Cougars got a chance here to cut in the lead again. He said they've only scored two points, but they're only down nine. 
Working around the outside. Vargas almost loses it. He drives, kicks it back out. Three-point shot on the way. Front iron and doesn't go. Rebound comes off to Coddington. Coddington runs over the good defender. And it's going to be called on Alameda. Pretty good defense, but the official saw otherwise. So we see the replay here. 50-50 call goes in favor of Columbia. That's the fourth personal foul picked up by the Cougars. Carper inbounds to Coddington. Now, Columbia working around the top of the key, 15 on the shot clock. Bartley, three-point shot, right wing, back ring. Ram doesn't go, rebound comes off to Alameda. Run your best play here. <laughs> Got to get a touchdown low as they do. Doesn't go though, just can't get the shots to fall right now for the Cougars as Yao missed another one. Impressed with their post defense of playing the post, defending the paint and not fouling. Timeout on the court gives us a chance to remind you this broadcast is brought to you by StoreQuest Express Self Storage. Load up your gear and live big with help from our new neighbors. StoreQuest Express Self Storage featuring 24-7 access and around-the-clock customer service. StoreQuest Express is here to help you make room for awesome. Get your first month's rent for only a dollar. Visit StoreQuest.com or call 209-284-6703 to reserve a unit today. Canapun Sons Drilling and Pumps. To get the most expert self or staff of well drillers and pump installation technicians, you can count on more than 30 years of experience to, to properly work on your well. We provide well drilling and pump installation services. To find out more, please call us at 209-532-1136 or go to our website, canapunsonsinc.com. Stuck on 11-2. Been about three minutes since we've had a point scored on by either team. We got an offensive foul. Good defense there by Alameda. And the same defender impressed with his moxie of staying in front and guarding Corey Brooks. 5'10 freshman. This time gets the call. So he's, he's one of two on those 50-50. And that's the way it goes, but you keep playing. Little, little extra on the pass there, and it turns it over to Columbia again. Right now, I think Alameda's just kind of trying to do too much, you know, simplify things. Three-point shot goes by Jakes. Gives him a 12-point lead. And you don't necessarily, sometimes taking it all the way to the basket screws up your spacing. So keep your spacing. Again, shot from inside. Doesn't go, and then we get to compound it by turning the ball, get starting the foul called on him, rather. Can't go next play, and this is usually the result. As we see the replay of Shakes hitting that three a moment ago for Columbia. But Alameda has not scored in six minutes. Nine minutes left to go here in the first half, 14 to two. Two touchdowns and a safety. Coddington brings it up for the claim jumpers. Back cut by Spivey, but he doesn't get it to go. Nice play there set up by Columbia. Just didn't get the finish that they were looking for. Brooks Jr. drives, gets it to go, and he's going to the free throw line. And finally, we get some points on the board again for Alameda. Brooks couple of nice plays defensively. Got one charge, was called for another. But look at his attack mode here. Little ball fake and attack. And claim jumpers were so cognizant of defending that paint that Brown was able to break down the defense and opportunity for the old-fashioned three-point play. Free throw doesn't go. Coddington. Brings it up for Columbia, gets it over to 
eventually over to Bartley. He gives it to Coddington, or, or Carper rather, and Carper goes for seven. Here, he's got seven of the 16 here in the first half. Stamps Another hasn't got a touch. Three-point shot from the top of the key. Doesn't go again for Alameda. Columbia taking a little time here. Coddington posts up. Smaller defender. Shot over him goes. Mixing defense with offense. These teams, Alameda 5-1, Columbia 6-0 oh versus common opponents. And, of course, that game back in December. Good defense again by the claim jumpers. Spivey trailing, gets it back over to Coddington. A little, little fortunate there as the ball was off of the fender and went right to Coddington. Bartley, wide open, three-point shot in the corner, and he hits it. That's a shot he's shot in this pavilion about five million times. 44% three, three-point shooter, and he nails it, giving Columbia a 21-4 lead, and we have a timeout called by Alameda. This broadcast is brought to you by Royce Davis Custom Painting. Royce Davis Custom Painting license insured and bonded, serving Northern California for over 20 years. We paint interior, exterior, cabinets, decks, Residential and commercial. No house too big, too tall, or too small. Give us a call 209 728 5947 or email Royce Davis, Rolls Royce Davis at Gmail for free estimate where quality is guaranteed. Benton Roberson CPA provides personalized tax and accounting and financial guidance to individuals, businesses throughout Tuolumne and Stanislaus counties. Our team believes in partnering with you and your team to build lasting relationships that help you achieve your financial goals. Give us a call today and experience the Benton Roberson difference. We look forward to hearing from you. So Rob Hoyt in his seventh season doing a little research for the game. When I got this job, I looked at the program as a bus, said Hoyt. I'm jumping onto the bus. The program at school already exists, and there is a recent history of not having successful basketball program. How do I change that for the better and make it my own? This first thing is get rid of all the people that you don't want on the bus, and which he has done. And they have, in his seventh season, here they are hosting a second round playoff game. Last three years, they are 63 in 19. So nice turnaround there. As you said, starting from a program that was basically in shambles. Yes. And now your second round home playoff game with a chance to host a third round at home as well if you can win tonight. We'll talk about that a little bit later yeah, on. Exactly. Drive. Nice job there by Brooks again, and he gets it over to Stamps, who puts it in the book. Give him two, and they're up to six. But there was a nice job again by Brooks, creating by the drive. And sharing the basketball, but not getting too far under the paint where he can't pass it. Spivey's three-point shot doesn't go. Rebound comes down to Brown for Alameda. Right now, I mean, it needs a couple of baskets in a row. Just something to get your confidence going. That's, That's pretty got to be a travel. Yeah. Pretty move, too many steps. Stamps. As you see here on the replay of our basket cam last time down with a little layup. Nice job of Stamps working his physicality underneath the basket, creating a space to catch the ball and finish. He'd be a great tight end. Shakes on the other end for Columbia. Worrying too much about defending the three, and the paint has been open quite a bit for the claim jumpers. Dwayne Johnson doesn't get the shot to go. Coddington comes away with the rebound. Always there to help, always there to rebound. Three-point shot on the way from Carver. Front iron doesn't go. Rebound tipped away, comes back to Carver. He tries to dunk it, doesn't get it to go. He's going to bring it back out, and Columbia going to reset. Bartley, three-point shot. It doesn't go. Carper again oh, with the rebound, oh. and finally gets it to go in with a left-handed layup. Offensive rebound, offensive rebound, kick out, playing hard. Not always pretty, but plays with a lot of energy and passion. Oh, another offensive foul called on the Stamps as he 
through the right arm, right into the chest of Carter. That was not an act on the neck of the flash, as we'll watch here on the replay. Here's, here's the replay of Harper getting the rebound and putting it up and in for Columbia. And now here's the... That's a bow. <laughs> That's a bow and a whiplash here on Saturday night at Oak Pavilion. Coddington and, and Carper bring it up. Now Carter. Hands off. Carper, three-point shot on the way. Doesn't go. Tip dunk. Attempt doesn't go, but we got a foul called. And that's going to send Carter to the free throw line for Columbia. Alameda was blocking out, but they weren't blocking out with any space. And there's room to get up the ladder and almost finish for Carter. Trayvon Watson called for the foul, and Carter going to the free throw line where he's a 55.7% free throw shooter on the season. His first hits the back iron, doesn't go. Big guys in free throw shooting, both sides. Carter, 55.7, Stamps, 64.3. He loves serving back Wilson Burgers. Carter, second free throw attempt, goes. So he hits one of two and extends the lead to 26 to six. Columbia up by 20 with just under five left to play here in the first half of play here from Oak Pavilion. Somebody got to make a play or two for the Cougars. Three-point shot, front rim, back rim, doesn't go. Carter comes away with the rebound. And again, one and done on the offensive side for Alameda. Three white jerseys versus two dark jerseys. They're going to win every single time. Coddington has it stripped away now by Brown. Brown out of control, lays it up and in, though. New, and gets it to go. Looked like he knew exactly what he was doing. Although it looked like he was a little too far out of the basket. Shakes has it now for Columbia. Drive, spins, doesn't get it to go. Rebound comes off to Alameda. See if they get a paint touch here, or just take it to the paint. Oh, there you go. Drive by Brooks Jr., and he's going to the free throw line as Carter got him with the body. Didn't turn and face the basketball that time, and little fatigued and a little delayed secondary break for the Cougars. Now Brooks Jr. going to the free throw line, but he's only a 51.1% free throw shooter on the season. He misses the first. Spivey checks back in for Columbia, replacing Carter. Second free throw by Brooks is up and in. It's one thing when you're down 17, but then you've only, you haven't even scored in double digits. But you got to keep the positive frame of mind. Carter goes and throws it up, and it rattles in. Hometown roll here at Oak Pavilion. As he gets it to go, and he's going to the free throw line for one. As hard as he plays, you're going to get some hometown rolls and a good move inside, being aggressive. Attack the big man. So often you see teams fearing the big man, but Coddington going right to the basket. Second foul on Jeremiah Stamps. Eighth team foul on Alameda. Coddington going to the free throw line where he is a 68.5% free throw shooter on the season. And he hits back iron, doesn't go, but Spivey controls it for Columbia. Reset, Bartley over to the corner for Shakes, and Shakes hits the three-pointer. Example of good shot. I've got to look, but my teammate has a great shot. Wide open, baseline three. Shakes now has 10. Talked about him when he came into the game. He's been improving his play, and he shows it there. On the other end, Yao gets two points for the Cougars. Pretty simple offense. Now, Coddington, or Harper almost has taken away. Gets it down to Shakes. Shakes lays it up. Nice reverse layup for Shakes. He's got 12. Leads all scorers. Defense. 
Harper's all over the field, all over the all over the court tonight. Another post entry, back-to-back -back field goals. Stamps, the recipient of another Brooks Jr. assist. Seems like tonight Brooks Jr. has to be involved for the Knights to be, or the Cougars rather to have an offensive possession that's positive. And he gets the, I mean, it's not a steal statistically, but in a coach's view, getting his hand, and there's the breakdown and the finish, but getting his hand in the passing lane, causing the bad pass and the turnover, you, you got to have better possessions offensively. And that one goes off the leg. He gives it back to Columbia. Oh, wow. 225 left to go here in the first half. Columbia up by 20. Spivey picks up his dribble. Then he travels six times. No, 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 I didn't say that. <laughs> he was what? on the verge with a sign or a, the bubble above his head of about to travel. Got caught in between places, and that's usually what happens. Brooks Jr. brings it up for the Cougars. You've got to set a little mini goal here if you're Alameda. I'd like to get within 15 before we you say that and it's a turnover. But Columbia's defensively has just Put on been, the clinic. been very good. When you have three sets of, of three pairs of feet into the paint at almost all time, just has a lot of traffic in there. And that's frustrating for a big man. 25 on the shot clock as Columbia inbounds. Shakes, fake the three, thought maybe he might go back up with it, but he gives it over to Bartley. Coddington gets it down low on Brooks. Goes baseline, goes up, doesn't get it to go, and rebound comes off to Watson for Alameda. And Alameda's defending the three-point line, so you're gonna get those one-on-one -on -one opportunities under the basket, but you gotta finish. Three-point shot on the way for Alameda goes by Terrell Brown. He's a 33.3% free throw or three-point shooter, and he hits the first three of the night for Alameda. Carper almost loses it, but gets it over to Coddington. Coddington slows things down to reset for Columbia. Here's the matchup: Brooks Jr. on Coddington. Now they switch. Little pick and pop opportunity. Spivey shot comes up short. Rebound comes off to Coddington. Out to the Spivey at the wing, and he's going to hit that if you leave him open. Another 50 50 ball that Grayson Carper is possessing, and it seems every time turns into a basket. Spivey, 35% three point shooter on the season, but when he's wide open in the corner, you know he's going to knock that down. So Alameda's look, okay, we got to stop, can pull within 15, 20 point lead. 19 on the shot clock, 32 on the game clock. Three-point shot on the way by Stamps. Back iron doesn't go, and Columbia can now hold for the last shot if they so choose as we have 22 on the game clock. Shot clock is off. Coach Hoyt calling a play here for Columbia. Coddington just dribbling down, waiting. 10 on the game clock now. Shake's going to come out and give him a screen. Coddington. Drives, picks up his dribble, pulls up, and hits as the time expires. And that's the way it's gone so far for Columbia. And for Alameda, you've had things pretty good the last nine games. Not much adversity. So how are the coaching staff of Alameda, how are the players going to react being down at half 22 points when you've only scored 16? This broadcast is being brought to you by David Goldenberg for District 1 Supervisor. David Goldenberg is a proven fire manager with 35 years of Cal Fire experience. He is an expert on fire preparedness. Davis concluded his Cal Fire career with a statewide deputy chief of command and control where he managed large, complex budgets. Vote for change. Vote for a proven experience. Vote for David. Jaron Brandon, candidate for Tuolumne County Supervisor for District 5. Reminds you, the last day to vote is Tuesday, March 3rd. Our county needs new leadership to fight for housing, living wages, careers, 
and government transparency so we can keep this a place our kids can stay, thrive, and start families of their own. Vote for Jerron on Tuesday and go Columbia. As we come to the halftime break, Sonora High being honored here tonight. Their Sonora High boys basketball team for winning the section championship on Thursday over Liberty Ranch at Golden One. Members of the team here tonight with their blue banner with the district or Sac Joaquin section division four championship. They'll have a home state playoff game Tuesday night. Storquest Express Self Storage. Load up your gear and live big with help of our new neighbors. Storquest Express Self Storage features 24 7 access and around the clock customer support. Storquest Express is here to help you make room for awesome. Get your first month's rent for only a dollar by visiting storquestexpress.com or call 209 284 6703 to reserve a unit today. Canapa and Sons Drilling and Pumps to get the most experienced staff of well drillers and pump installation technicians you can count on for more than 30 years of experience to properly work on your well. We provide well drilling and pump installation services. To find out more, please call 209-532-1136 or go to our website www.canapaandsonsinc.com. Royce Davis Custom Painting. Royce Davis Custom Painting, licensed, insured, and bonded, serving Northern California for over 20 years. We paint interior, exterior, cabinets, decks, residential, and commercial. No house too tall, too big, or too small. Give us a call at 209-728-5947 or email Royce, Rolls Royce Davis at Gmail for a free estimate where quality is guaranteed. 
We'll be back with more after these messages on NorCal Sports TV. Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches. Contact us today. This broadcast of Columbia College Basketball is brought to you by Canapa and Sons Drilling. Canapa and Sons Drilling, to get the most expert staff of well drillers and pump installation technicians, you can count on our more than 30 years of experience to properly work on your well. Family owned and operated since 1981, give them a call at 209-532-1136. And by Royce Davis Custom Painting. Royce Davis Custom Painting, licensed, insured, and bonded. Serving Northern California for over 20 years. We paint interior, exterior, cabinets, decks, residential, and commercial. No house too tall, no house too big, and no house too small. Give us a call at 209-728-5947 or email at RollsRoyceDavis at gmail.com for a free estimate where quality is guaranteed.
Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches. Contact us today. back here as we get ready to start the second half of play. Columbia up 38-16 and uh, it was a rough half there for Alameda. <laughs> Two points in the first 11 and a half minutes of play. Finally got a little stuff going there towards the end of the first half but by then they were down by 20 points consistently there. What does Alameda got to do to get back in the game here? Don't look Don't look at the scoreboard. Have quality possessions. Work it through the paint. Doesn't mean don't shoot threes, but try to get a little tempo going. But also, a lot of, most of the 50-50 balls are going to Columbia. In particular, how Garber's just, Grayson Garber's just getting a lot. Every, it seems like every loose ball. So when you hustle, you get stops then it'll turn into offense. And that's what Columbia's do. They're not lighting up the scoreboard by any means, but they're getting the 50-50 balls. They're getting the stop, and they're executing their defensive game plan. Alameda's, they've had a couple of easy shots at the basket, but for the most part, those big guys are in traffic. When they played CSM their last game, there was no traffic. You're right. And it's funny, you leave the barrier, you think, you're out of the traffic, but you're really getting into more traffic, and we'll explain later. Columbia is out hustling Alameda, basically. I mean, it's just point blank. They're they're playing with a higher intensity, and Alameda. I'm not sure if it's just the bus ride up here or what what the deal is, but they uh, came out sluggish there in the first half, and. We'll see if they can answer here in the second. You start by getting back into the game, getting your first stop of the fir of the second half, and then you build from there. Columbia, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing fine. Claim jumpers are open possession. Coddington, backdoor cut by Carper, lays it up and in, reverse layup. And that's an example of Alameda wanting to defend the three-point arc, and you're getting a little two-man game and executing and getting the easy, easy basket to start the second half. Drive, layup, oh, doesn't go, follow by Stamps, doesn't go as well, and it comes off to Carper. Three on two, Spivey gives to Bartley. Bartley drives baseline, has the shot, or pass, deflected out of bounds by Stamps. As we see the replay of the layup a moment ago. Sleeping in the key. 24 on the shot clock. Carper going to inbound for Columbia. Spivey, quick move, lays it up and in off the glass. Nice job to get around the out. They're known for the three-point shooting, but they've had ultra success of taking the ball to the basket. Shot, short, rebound. Fought for and then corralled by the Cougars. Three-point shot doesn't go again, and it's finally brought down by Columbia. Coddington comes down, gets it over to Bartley. Bartley behind the screen, doesn't take it. Now gets it over to Carter. Carter, one dribble, two dribbles, off the glass, doesn't go. Rebound comes off to Brown for Alameda. Brown works behind the screen. Now... Pull-ups, 
Back iron doesn't go. Rebound comes off Carter, though, and it's going to stay. Alameda ball. There's just like this little three-man mini wall in the paint of white jerseys. Anytime the ball goes up, they're blocking out with space and most of the time able to secure the rebound. Stamps gets it. Gets down to Brown. Brown tries to get the shot to go, though, again. That's the fourth or fifth time they've had the ball almost go in, but just rim out. Bartley brings it around the screen, tries to go up, and he's hammered by Brown. He earns himself a trip to the free throw line where he's one of the best free throw shooters on Columbia at 83.8%. The message, we weren't in the locker room, but I imagine Coach Hoyt was telling the guys, hey, the opportunity is there – so worried about defending our three-point shooting the basket is open every possession of the second half they're going to the basket a little announcer jinx absolutely i was just thinking as he misses the free th first free throw quiet night for bartley so far only three points on the evening Hits the second free throw. Give him four now. Law pass, but again, nice job by Columbia. Coddington coming in and deflecting the pass. How many times has he had backside help on that lob pass into the post? Coach Collins. Did you say work the damn ball? Not sure Maybe exactly what he said, but that's he how was, I heard it. He was emphatically explaining something to his teammate, or his team rather. Spivey, three point shot from the right wing, doesn't go. Stamps comes away with it. Brooks Jr. back in for the Cougars. Let's see if they try to work the ball through him. And then another lob pass and another interception by Columbia. This is going to age me, but you can't send a Western Union telegraph pass like that. It's going to get picked off every single time. Bartley loses control. Gets it over to Bar Brooks Jr. now for Alameda. He lays it up. Doesn't get it to go, but he's going to the free throw line as Coddington. Hard hit him as the, on the layup. But he got hustled back. Didn't allow the uncontested layup. Make him shoot a couple of free throws. And when Brooks is shooting 51%, hey, don't give him a layup. Make him go to the free throw line and earn it. First free throw up and good. Brooks 5'10", 150 freshman guard at Donaldsonville High School. And you can tell the body language of the Cougars. It's the, the shoulder shrug. They're not, you know, playing with big, broad shoulders. As Columbia is, kind of playing with a lot of confidence. Kind of the defeated body language is yes. what you're saying, you know. You're looking out there, and, and you don't see guys that, that have the confidence that, hey, we can come back from this. I mean, that's that Coddington comes right down the lane and just lays it up and in with nobody even testing it. That's a summer league layup drill. Brown working on Carper gets it out to the stamps at the top of the key. Now Brooks calling out a play for the Cougars. He drives around Carper, picks up his dribble, gets it over to Watson. He lays it up and in high off the glass. Nice job there. And we got a timeout called on the floor by Coach Collins. This gives us a chance to remind you this broadcast is brought to you by David Goldenberg. Goldenberg. For District 1 Supervisor, vote for change, vote for proven experience, vote for David. Jerron Brandon for District 5 Supervisor. StoreQuest Express Self-Storage, get your first month's rent for only a dollar. Canapa and Sons Drilling and Pumps, providing well-driven drilling and pump installation service for over 30 years. Royce Davis Custom Painting, no house too tall, too big, or too small. Benton Roberson CPAs, serving Tuolumne and Stanislaus Counties. 
Sonora Conference Centers, four unique rooms in downtown Sonora. Go to www.sonoraconferencecenters.com for details. Sam Stringer Photography. Go to samstringerphotography360.com. Check out all the pictures, including action shots from tonight's game. Columbia set to inbound the ball up by 25 here. 16 and a half left to go in the game. Great ball. spacing by Columbia. This entire half of just a lot of space on the floor for dribble penetration, drive and kick, and really opening the drive lanes. Foul called on Brooks Jr., his second, team second here in the second half. Coddington, again, drives right through the baseline. Doesn't get it to go, but Carter there for the rebound and put back. Stamps had to go help on defense. Weak side rebound, he wasn't there. Easy put back. Brooks Jr. drives. Hands it off to Stamps. Stamps has the shot rejected by Coddington and comes away with it as 5 e for Columbia. Defending the paint. The lob doesn't go for Columbia. Now we got three on three as Columbia gets back nicely on defense. Again, they try to feed it down to Stamps and he gets it taken away. Harper comes away with it. Three-point shot from the right wing. Hammered it down. 30-point lead for Columbia. He's been there at the right time in the right place. Most of the time, he, he's sure that basketball, but sticks the wide-open three. And, and, you know, being in the right place is it's nice, but it's all because of the hustle effort that Most he's shown certainly. all it night doesn't, long. It doesn't just happen. You, you do it by playing with a lot of energy and passion. Now Stamps goes up, has a shot again, rejected by Carter. Carper comes away with it for Columbia. Up by 30, 15 minutes left to go here in the second half. Coddington got a little, got a little away, and then now the ball is tipped away by Spivey coming back. Bartley over to Coddington. Coddington says, we're going to slow this down. I love that. It's very no mature. Need to, no need to try and just run it up right now. We're just ahead by big amount. Let's slow things down, and Spivey. Gets the rebound, doesn't get it to go, but he's going to the free throw line. There's a sense of having, knowing what's going on in the game, and here's another Wilson Berger served back hot, but Coddington as well with the help defense. But there has been a switch of possessions. It was just a good time to say, hey, let's work the basketball. And then Garber, wait, he's wide open, but didn't hit the, Carper didn't hit the wide open three, but they got the offensive rebound. I gave the block to Card Coddington, but it looked like on the replay that it might have been Carter with his third of the night. So either way, maybe they give him a half of each. I'm not sure, but. Well, the point is that they're all defending the paint. Here's the replay again. Now, I'm, I'm going to say that was Coddington. But, every, oh, but then there's Carter, too. Maybe there's two. Every claim jumper was in the paint. So two blocks. So if we're having an analyzation of who's doing what. That's a good thing as far as the coaches go. Just like in the Santa Rosa game last night, there was a foul reaching in the paint, but they all had their feet in the paint. Carver comes away with it. A little out of control, brings it back to Coddington. Coddington, beautiful drive, gets it over to Carter. Carter, hook shot, gets it to go. Columbia feeling it now here, up big. Crowd is into it. Cougars bring it around. Brooks, nice move. Does get the finish though, and Carter comes away with the rebound. Spivey over to Bartley. Corner three on the way. Back iron. Running bound comes off to Spivey. Spivey goes up with it and call for the travel before the shot. But again, you see Columbia going to the offensive boards and beating two, two guys. guys. Beating two guys that were in front of him, but be able to judge where that ball is going to come off the rim and going and exploding 
quick twitch muscle and get the basketball. Spivey only nine points on the night. That's a slow night for him, but he's done other things on the defensive end and off in the offensive rebounds to make up for not scoring a bunch of points. Sometimes you got to score 30 in the game to win. Sometimes you got to do the little things, and that's what he's done tonight. Coddington on the floor, up the Carper. Showtime, doesn't get it to go, though. Comes off the rim, back to the Cougars. Brooks Jr. drives, and Coddington fouls him. He's going to the free throw line once again. Even the most opportune times where you think you're on top of the earth, this game will still humble you, and here is an example. Nice to move there by Brooks Jr. And that's one of those things line. as a coach in the back of your head. You go, yeah, it's our night. Well, that might be one I might, I'm might. i going to bring up and film there. And his teammates are oh, going to. Oh, they're going to let him know. They're yeah. going to let him know. Hey, but it's a lot easier to let him know when you're up by a 34. Most certainly. As coming into the game is Shakes. he have had 12 in the first half. Replacing Bartley. In the diary of moments of humility. Second free throw up and good by Brooks Jr. You remember when? Oh, yeah, Coach. Oh, yeah, yeah. they're going to show it four or five times, I'm sure. <laughs> there you go. There's a dunk. Coddington setting up Carter for the slam. It was as if he was all by himself down low. Stamps has the ball knocked out of his hand, but it's going to be called a foul on Shakes. So if you can defend the post, you can't be untouched there. He came down the whole possession. No one even touched him. It's one thing if you're a wing player. That's great. But if you're a post guy, the post guy's got to be handled. And that was a easy, easy alley-oop. Three-point shot on the way. Doesn't go, but a foul called. On Carter, going to send Mailberg to the three point or free throw line for three. As we see another angle of the alley oop dunk, and all the eyes of Alameda were all looking at each other, knowing, thinking, "Did you have them? Did I have them? Nobody had them." First free throw up and good. Again, Cameron, own an 87, 81.7% free throw shooter. Hits the first of three. Gets a second to go as well as Bartley is going to come in for Carter. So it looks like Santa Rosa Junior College will be heading up here to Gold Country for a regional final next Saturday. 7 o'clock tip off. As long as things continue the way they've gone here live from Oak Pavilion. Spivey kicks it back out, pass tipped away, last touched by Alameda. So the Columbia's going to have 13 on the shot clock. As you mentioned, the winner of this game gets Santa Rosa, who was victorious last night in their second round game. Good post defense that time, protecting the basket by Stamps. It was also on our network. And then we got a foul called away from the ball on Bartley, his third. Stamps hands it off to Mayborn. Gives it back down low to Stamps. Stamps spins, loses control on the way up. And then Yao is fouled on the way up, and he's going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. He's a 70.6% free throw shooter. You're up 33 points. The ball goes down low. Alameda has a successful possession. But the claps and the communication that goes on after that play, you know what was in the game plan. And they're not going to slack off. They're, they're playing hard every single possession, defending the paint. And although they're 
in a lopsided situation right now. Columbia still has the ultimate focus on defense. Yao hits both free throws. He's got four points on the evening. Carper's pass tipped away by Yao. Good job by Bartley coming to meet the basketball. Or that would have been a turnover the other way. And now comes to Spivey. He gets it over to Shakes. Carper flashes. Doesn't get it to go. Shakes volleyballs it off the glass. Back over to Carper. And Columbia has another possession. Coddington. He gets it over to Bartley. Bartley. Coddington always seems to be in control. Drives, does, and gets it to go. I thought it was going to come off, but he went in. Nice job there by Bartley with the layup, getting it back up to a 33-point lead. Then on the other end, Coddington intercepts the pass. Spivey drives, gets it to go, and he's going to the free throw line, and that's another foul. That's going to be the third foul on Jeremiah Stamps for Alameda. I think he was inside the arc. Yes, he was. Good call by the official. Producer Dion I all over that here with our backboard cam. Spivey free throw doesn't go. Rebound comes off the Stamps. Yao controls the rebound for the Cougars. Fadeaway jumper short. Rebound comes off the stamps. He goes up and he puts it in. A little contact there with Coddington. No foul call though. And he gets the points for Alameda. Nice touch pass. Carper, three-point shot. Doesn't go. Rebound comes off to Coddington. Bartley's going to launch. He doesn't get it to go either. A little too strong. And then rebound comes off to Shakes. And he's fouled on the floor. And that could be four on Stamps. Was a bad defense. That is the fourth foul on Stamps. At this point, you just leave him in, right? I mean, nine and a half left to go. Coddington working on stamps. Going right at him, and that's five. I heard a jaw click on that collision. Smart play, though. I mean, you go after the guy with four, right? Smaller. You don't see this enough in basketball. Watch his head click. As soon as, you, as soon as he stays in the game, you go right after him. And that's the fifth foul on Stamps. Might, might be an opportunity to have a dentist sponsor us. This game is brought to you in part by David Goldenberg for District 1 Supervisor. Vote for change. Vote for proven experience. A vote for David. Coddington going back to the free throw line tonight. Misses the first. Also, broadcast brought to you by Jerron Brandon for District 5 Supervisor. Coddington second free throw up, rattles off, doesn't go, missed them both. Again, Alameda gets possession in the paint but doesn't get it to go. And Carper comes away with the rebound for Columbia. So Columbia's won six games in a row. Alameda's won nine games in a row. City College of San Francisco's won 28 in a row, about to be 29. Fresno City, 15 in a row. So those two teams are winning tonight and will extend their streak, but Alameda, long winning streak's going to come to an end. Another attempted alley-oop dunk doesn't go. Comes off the rebound, or off the iron. Three-point shot on the way, and it's good by Mabel. Back-to-back three-point shots by Alameda. 
cuts into the lead. But the timeout on the floor gives a chance to remind you. This game is brought to you by StoreQuest Express Self Storage. Load up your gear and live big with help from our new neighbors. StoreQuest Express Self Storage featuring 24-7 access and around-the-clock customer support. StoreQuest Express is here to help you make room for awesome. Get your first month's rent for only a dollar. Visit storequest.com or 209-284-6703 to reserve a unit today. Also brought to you by Canapa and Sons Drilling and Pumps. To get the most expert staff of well drillers and pump installation technicians, you can count on them for more than 30 years' experience to provide your pump works properly work on your well. We provide well drilling pump installation services. To find out more, please call 209 532 1136 or go to our website, canapunsonsinks.com. Shakes pass, tipped away. Columbia playing a little more loose here on the offensive end here in the last couple minutes. Mayberg goes up with it, gets it to go, and he's going to the free throw line. Another chance for a three-point play. That would be the third in a row for the Cougars. And Santa Rosa, who defends the paint very well, but gives up a lot of threes. And with Columbia shooting and making a lot of threes, it's going to be an interesting matchup. Maber free throw shot up and good. And that's nine straight points now for the Cougars. Columbia taking their time here. Carper high off the glass and gets it to go. Needed that basket. 16 points now for Carper. He has the game high. And you're right, they needed that to go. Not, not that the game's really in doubt, but you don't like to see 9, 12, 15 points in a row when you're up big and all of a sudden Clark clock starts ticking down and Give him a little hope, and you never know what's going to happen. You get the get the nice little shot there off the glass by Carper. On the other end, yeah, going to the free throw line again for the Cougars. At 13 against College of San Mateo on their win Wednesday night. Hits the first. He's a 70.6% free, free throw shooter on the season. Second free throw up, rattles around and falls. Coach McMillan drove up with him, Santa Rosa JC to the game, and they get films or go out the huddle accounts, but there's something about watching a team in person. Spivey, back cut, drive, doesn't get it to go. Ta almost takes it back away from Alameda, but the Cougars are able to control it. Good defense by Dwayne Johnson. Protecting the paint. Now they feed the rock down low and he puts it in. 22 point lead now for Columbia. Once was a 33 point lead. I think Coach Collins wanted to see a trap there. Bartley controls it. Ten on the shot clock for Columbia. Shot. Doesn't go, but Bartley's going back to the free throw line for the claim jumpers. Foul called on number four, Watson. As we see the replay of Dwayne Johnson landed up and in. And most often you see that post-entry pass, and they want to bring it down. Johnson held strong, the chest high level and finished. First free throw up and good for Bartley. Second free throw. On the way for Bartley. Rattles around, doesn't go, and Johnson comes away with it. 
for Alameda. Alameda, Brooks Jones, or Brooks Jr. rather, got in low, couldn't do anything, throws it up, doesn't get it to go, rebound off, and then Alameda controls it, three-point shot on the way, up and good. Hit there by Mayberg, and it's all of a sudden a 20-point lead with six minutes left to go. Now Alameda comes away with it again. Brooks Jr. run the nine route. Doesn't get it to go. Coddington comes away with it for Columbia. Could have got that down to 18 and maybe turn up the heat defensively. You're only going to get so many possessions. You've got to make them all count. Credit Alameda, though. They're cut back into the lead here. Again, Columbia was up by 33 at one point. Now down to 20. Coddington on the drive, doesn't go. Rebound by Alameda, but they give it right back to Columbia. And Carper says, give me the ball, we can work some more clock here. Him <laughs> Good job by Spivey of putting the air brakes on there. Looked like he was gonna go to the basket, be out of control. I think you heard Coach Hoyt. I better slow down here. Coddington just standing there, dribbling down to 10. Spivey with the screen, Coddington, two, one. Doesn't get the three-point shot to go. Brown comes away with it for Alameda. We call that a new, but no all move. You get the three-point shot, move, shot goes finish. by Mailberg. And now we're at <laughs> little, little, little tightening now here by Columbia. Columbia again, slowing things down. Gets it down to Carter. Carter loses it back over to Alameda. I think a timeout's coming soon. I, I, I guarantee if Alameda scores here, there'll be a timeout called by Coach Hoyt. So he'll be now, shooting free throws. Yep, one and one. As the fourth, our third foul on Coddington. And scoring with the clock stopped. This is huge. And then you can set up the defense pending you making the free throws. 81.7% free throw shooter, best on the team at the line right now is Mayborg. And now, we got a little water on the court. Gives us a chance to remind you this game is brought to you by David Goldenberg for District 1 Supervisor. David Goldenberg is a proven fire manager with 35 years of Cal Fire experience. He is an expert on fire preparedness. David concluded his Cal Fire career as a statewide deputy chief of command and control where he managed large complex budgets. Vote for change. Vote for proven experience. Vote for David. Jaron Brandon, candidate for Tuolumne County Supervisor District 5, reminds you the last day to vote is Tuesday, March 3rd. Our county needs new leadership to fight for housing, living wage careers, and government transparency. So we can keep this a place our kids can stay, thrive, and stay, and start their own families of their own. Vote for Jerron on Thursday, or Tuesday, and go Columbia. Storquest Express self-storage. Get your first month's rent for only a dollar. Canapa and Sons Drilling and Pumps, providing well drilling and pump installation service for over 30 years. Royce Davis Custom Painting, no house too tall, too big, or too small. Still working on it. Looks like there's blood on the court is the issue, so they're taking a little time to clean that up and get that sanitized. This NCS TV Summer Basketball Camp, the five-day overnight camp for 4th through 12th graders. Register now with a $99 deposit and $100 off camp enrollment. Go to NorCalSportsTV.com slash camp for all the details. Royce Davis Custom Painting. Royce Davis Custom Painting is licensed, insured, and bonded, serving Northern California for over 20 years. 
We paint interior, exterior, cabinets, decks, and residential and commercial. No house too big, too small, or too tall. Give us a call, 209-728-5947, or email RollsRoyceDavis at gmail.com for a free estimate where quality is guaranteed. Looks like things are cleaned up on the court, and we're getting ready to get back to action here. Scores of other games, San Francisco leading Delta 77-52, Fresno City beating Diablo Valley 50-31, and Yuba beating Las Positas 63-41, other scores in Northern California. So as we get ready to reset here, we got Cameron Maver on the free throw line for Alameda. Shooting the second of his two free throws. But before that, we'll be right back after these matches on NorCal Sports TV as they finish taking care of things. Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches. Contact us today. David Goldenberg for District 1 Supervisor. Sharon Brandon for District 5 Supervisor. StoreQuest Express Self Storage. Canapun Sons Drilling and Pumps. Sonora Conference Center. Royce Davis Custom Painting. The NCS TV Summer Basketball Camp. Benton Roberson CPAs. Straight Sports. Recruiting Boost Athletic College Placement Services. The fourth annual All NorCal Games. Sport Stars Mag. Sam Stringer Photography. And the David Goldenberg for District 1 Supervisor. David Goldenberg is a proven fire manager with 35 years of Cal Fire experience. He is an expert in fire preparedness. David concluded his Cal Fire career at the statewide Deputy Chief of Command and Control where he managed large complex budgets. Vote for change. Vote for proven experience. Vote for David. Sharon Brandon, candidate for Tuolumne County Supervisor for District 5, reminds you the last day to vote is Tuesday, March 3rd. Our County needs new leadership to fight for housing, living wage careers, and government transparency so we can keep this place for a, a place that our kids can stay, thrive, and start families of their own. Vote for Jaron on Tuesday and go Columbia. StoreQuest Express Self Storage. Load up your gear and live big with help from our new neighbors. StoreQuest Express Self Storage featuring 24 7 access and around the clock customer service. StoreQuest Express is here to help you make room for awesome. Get your first month's rent for only a dollar. Visit storequest.com or call 209 284 6703 to reserve a unit. Canapa and Sons Drilling and Pumps. To get the most expert staff of well drillers and pump installation technicians, you can count on for more than 30 years experience to properly work on your well. We provide well drilling and pump installation services. To find out more, give us a call at 
336 or go to our website www.canapaandsonsinc.com We've got blood all over the floor. Not gulps, big drops, just little drops here and there and the need to we get, have to get that cleaned up before we can continue. And for Alameda, chance to get a little rest. Go back and uh, continue to do what they're doing. And I think if you're Columbia, you want to get back moving the basketball. Stops defensively, but get back into not so much just dribbling in place and going your Caltrans offense where everybody's standing around. Move, cut. Those things that have been successful throughout the season. So we got three Colombian players with different uniforms on now. You got Coddington, normally number four. He's wearing number three. Spivey looks like he's got on number 33 as opposed to with 11. And then Bartley has on 25. Oh. <laughs> Instead of one. And then you got Carter with 31. So four players had to change their uniforms along with all the blood that was on the court from whatever happened Bartley three point shot wide left doesn't go and now Alameda with another chance to cut in the lead again get it to 13 three point shot on the way back iron doesn't go but the Cougars come away with it as Brooks Jr. gets another shot now drive floater high off the glass doesn't go rebound comes off but there's going to be a foul called on Columbia and that's going to give more free throws, this time to Dwayne Johnson. I think they're calling it on Bartley, but I loved his positioning underneath the basket. Probably got called for the old uh, wraparound. That's how my dad taught me to block out. But, but anyway. Dwayne Johnson going to the free throw line with another chance here to cut this down to 13. Johnson only a 43.8% free throw shooter, though, on the season. Hits the first. Johnson, dribble, back iron, doesn't go, rebound. Comes to Bartley and he gets timeout. Called on the, while he's on the ground. Big play, because if that's held basketball, the possession arrow's pointing towards Alameda. We'll be back after these messages on NorCal Sports TV. Ben Roberson CPAs provides personalized tax and accounting financial guidance to individual businesses throughout Tuolumne and Stanislaus County. Our team believes in partnering with you and your team to build lasting relationships to help you achieve your financial goals. Give us a call today and experience the Benton Roberson difference. We look forward to hearing from you. So what once was a 33-point lead for Columbia has been whittled down to 14 now with 349, 339 left to go here in the second half. Chris, Columbia went to that little stall offense and slowed things down. And great job here. Great job of coaching. Alameda, down by points, knows, hey, we're going to send the worst free throw shooter on the team, Caleb Carter, to the free throw line when the ball's inbound <laughs> 92 feet away from him. Well, you're down this many points with this little of time. You know, you can't stand around and just play defense for 30 seconds. And even if you get the ball, you're, you're down to three minutes. So the officials are having a discussion since the ball was so far away, but it's just an off-ball well, Maybe ball the ball wasn't even inbounds yet. Yeah. It, either way, if, if they're going to go to that tactic, that's a great uh, tactic as, as far as I'm concerned. I've been Well, you have a plan. I mean, you, there's a plan there. I mean, that's what you, 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 you expect from coaches to have a plan. 
So Carter is going to go to the free throw line. And they're going to call intentional. Now that kind of changes things a little bit because Carter's going to get two free throws and then Columbia will get the ball back. But the officials talking about it in the effort of trying to get the call correct. So Carter, 55.7% free throw shooter. Front rims the first. So I, I'm i still not if, against if I'm Alameda. As soon as he gets near the ball, just foul him. You, know, and, and you have Coach to Hoyt, watch how you foul, though. Right. You have Coach to Hoyt, maybe you think about subbing somebody else in if Alameda is going to continue to do that. Well, but there's also a point of breaking a player's confidence. Maybe this is the opportunities. I know he missed both free throws. Good call, Jeremy. Shake's checking in. But if he makes those Carter. free throws, right. maybe he gets over the hump. But, you know, when you've – this isn't the first game of the year. You've played your regular season games. There are trends. There are statistics. That's why right. we bring them to you. You call them percentages on the season for a reason. <laughs> yeah. So, reset here. Three and a half left. Columbia up by 14. Here comes the trap by Alameda. Pass. Almost knocked away. Carper. Gets it back out to Coddington. Spivey begging for it on the left wing. Eight on the shot clock here. Now five, Coddington. Got to go to work. Drives and bailed out. Bailed out by Dwayne Johnson because Coddington was going to the ground regardless if Johnson touched him or not. There's a sign of a team that plays together. Coddington, the leader in the storm, goes to the floor, and his teammates are there quickly to give him a hand. You see him in that last part of the replay. Everybody coming to assist and pick up a teammate. That shows a sign of a collective unit. Now Carter checking back in for Shakes. Little offense for defense. And then Coddington hits the free throw. He's had a rough night from the line so far, but he got the first one there to fall. And he hits a second. That's 11 points now for Coddington. If you're just joining us and looking at some interesting numbers on the floor for Columbia, there's blood on jerseys. So four of the five starters had to change their uniforms here a few moments ago. Spivey comes away with the rebound for the claim jumpers. And it gets it over to Coddington. And Coddington going to slow it down again and say, hey, we're up still by 16. Work some shot clock here. Alameda coming out, trying to force the issue. Carter tied up by Alameda and Yao. And again, this is the same thing we talked about a moment ago. As soon as he touches the ball, almost a hack-a-shack technique here on Carter. Make sure he can't go up with it. Make sure he doesn't get the, the and one. Send him to the free throw line. Make him earn it. First free throw. Rattles off for Columbia. So 16 point lead. Two and a half left to go here in the second half. Carter at the free throw line for Columbia. Back iron, no good. Rebound fought for and controlled by Alameda. Nice job there by Terrell Brown. Nice job there. Mayburn lost control, but yeah, was able to control it and put it in. And timeout on the floor. Gives us a chance to remind you this broadcast is brought to you by Royce Davis Custom Painting. Royce Davis Custom Painting is licensed, insured, and bonded, serving Northern California for 20 years. We paint interior, exterior, cabinets, decks, residential, and commercial. No house too tall, big, or too small. Give us a call at 209-728-5947 or email rollsroycedavis at gmail.com for a free estimate where quality is guaranteed. So, Chris, two minutes and change left to go here. Down by 14. 
Alameda has done a great job of coming back in this game and, and, and sticking with it, cutting it once. 33-point lead for Columbia down to 14. Haven't been able to give it down to 10, though. Once you get it down under 10, you kind of feel like you have a chance. They've been kind of getting to that 13, then back to 15. 13, back to 15. What are they going to do to try and get up and over that hump? Well, you're limited in time, and, you know, you're already in the double bonus. So you just bet on the fact is that you're going to make, if you go for the steal on the inbound, you don't get it. you got to foul strategically, immediately, and then hope you can get the rebound and come down and score with a purpose. But the struggles in the first half, you know, the greatest understatement in sports for Alameda just did not play very well offensively in the first half. Yeah, 11 and a half minutes, or, or 11 and a half minutes and two points in the first half is definitely a negative that they're going to look at and, and wish they had back. Pass out of bounds, tipped by Yao. Would have been an opportunity there. That was almost a turnover by Columbia. Twenty on the shot clock, two oh nine left to go here in the second half. Ball tipped away and foul called. Not a bad foul by Brown. If you're not going to get the steal, you might as well get the foul. Sends Spivey to the free throw line. Spivey, 64.4% free throw shooter, so not a not another bad option. Even though he shoots the three point shot so well, has his struggles from the free throw line. Back iron, no good. And if Columbia does hold on to win the game, these are the things that stay in your head as a player. Because you don't remember a lot of the good. It always goes back, if you're a good player, of those things I could have done better. Second free throw goes for Spivey, one of two. Back to a 15-point lead. Drive. Spong. Ball. Knocked away by Shakes. But a good aggressive play there by Cameron Mabo. Here he comes back inbound from the corner three. The guy that's the easiest to forget about is the guy that inbounds the ball, and that's a nice job there coming off the screen. Hitting the three, cutting it down to 12. We have another timeout. Just substitution there. So 12-point lead, 152 left to go. Alameda going to play pressure defense now. and Harper has it double teamed and throws it away. Bad place to put the ball in the corner. It always ends up being a turnover. Mayberg drive, lays it up and in. And he's going to the free throw line. And we have a player down on the floor. Four, that's Dwayne Johnson for Alameda. But Mayberg goes to the free throw line. Actually, it was Brooks John Jr., my bad. Brooks Jr. goes to the free throw line after the layup. And watch out, 66-56, 10-point game. And when you're getting trapped, don't throw the ball to the corner, and it turns into a turnover for Columbia. Brooks Jr. hits the free throw they down to nine. That threshold. So playoff basketball, you up by 33 in the second half. I think you got it under control. Now we have a timeout call by Columbia. Alameda comes storming back, cuts the lead down to nine, and gives us a chance to see a video here. We'll be back after these messages on NorCal Sports TV.
One minute and 30 seconds left to go here in regulation as Columbia is up 66-57. Coddington gets the inbound pass. Trying to steal it away and they foul Spivey. Spivey going to the free throw line once again. He just hit one or two a few moments ago. Coach but Hoyt with a quick free throw tip. Again, not a bad foul there if you're Alameda. Spivey, 64.4% free throw shooter on the season. And as I mentioned, he just hit one of two as he hits the first there. Making it back a 10-point game. Second free throw up. Front iron, back iron doesn't go, so he hits one or two again. Mayberg drives off the glass, gets in, and now it's an eight-point game. Coddington gets it, 1-11 left to go. Alameda trapping, doesn't get it. Spivey drives, lays it up and in. Play to win the game. I love the assertiveness of going to the basket. If it's there, take it. Rebound Coddington and that, as we go under a minute, just might do it as Coddington brings it out for Columbia. Give and go back to Coddington and he's just trying to waste some time as Bartley gets it over to Coddington. And then we got a foul called, intentional foul again. Good call. Called on Watson and yeah, it is a good call. Good he was, call, it was obvious, obvious. So Carter going to go free throw line again, but Columbia gets the ball back after the free throws and then with 38.6, just about a half and under control here up by 10. But a great effort here by Alameda to cut into the lead and make it a little bit nervous there for Columbia in the last couple minutes. Carter hits the first free throw. <laughs> Much to the appreciation of the Columbia College fans here. Also for his confidence. Pretty smooth. It's the second. Clear the mechanism. And that's how you answer when you're a free throw shooter that's yes. struggling. And and it's easy to shoot free throws. You got a nice gym here, you a good crowd on hand, and you make two in a row. That's quality stuff. And then Carper going to the free throw line here, being aggressive. Yeah, if you get to the basket, you've got a shot there, be aggressive. All within the framework of the inbound play. Carper 77.4% nice free cut. throw shooter. And again, fouled on the play by Yao. Carper does a lot of good things out of Clovis West High School, moving without the basketball, moving defensively without being the primary defender. And as you mentioned, there's a reason why you get a lot of those loose balls. Second free throw doesn't go. Columbia up by 13. Layup high off the glass. Timeout called by Alameda with 30 seconds left. So it looks like uh, Coach McMillan and Santa Rosa Junior College will need to make their plans to come up to uh, Columbia next weekend. And we'll have that game for you right here on NorCal Sports TV. And how do you find out about future games or schedule? You follow us on social media at NorCal Sports TV. And where you're watching this game, and not or, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're not going to send you annoying emails. We're not going to charge you a subscription fee and give you security film. Multi-camera with announcers and instant replay right here on NorCal Sports TV. YouTube.com slash NorCal Sports TV. Columbia trying to inbound the ball here. I said that like I've said it a few thousand times. I, I might have heard that before from you. <laughs> and then we got a foul called 
Bartley going to the free throw line as Dwayne Johnson grabbed him as he went by. So common one common opponent that Columbia and College of uh, Santa Rosa JC have is Sequoia. We had that game on NorCal Sports TV. Santa Rosa against Sequoia it was their first loss of the season. They were undefeated at the time. Columbia has split with the Giants. So there's a common opponent. Research is already going, and we're seven days away. No, we don't love doing basketball at all. 13-point lead here. High off the glass, gets it to go, and he's going to the free throw line again. Cameron Mayberg has had a second half here for Alameda. He only averages 17.4, but he's got 27 here on the night with a chance to make it 28. You want to thank both these coaches, texted in this morning, helping us with uh, information, help us prepare in the game, hopefully it reflected in the broadcast. And it's nice, don't get an opportunity. We used to work nine million games together with Dion I. He running multiple cameras, directing and answering calls on his business line at the same time, and I'm yapping away. Good to work with Dion and, of course, with Jeremy and the rest of our crew here tonight. So Alameda down by 10. They're going to they're gonna go home after this game and then think about that first 11 and a half minutes where they only scored two points in this game and really, really feel like they let this get away from right there in the first 11 and a half minutes. Since then, they played pretty well. Yeah, and we, we talked about right before the half, how are the coaches and how is the, the Cougars team, their, their staff, how are they going to handle? And they, they made their adjustments but didn't have a real fast start. And you recall Columbia at the beginning of this half were able to attack the basket and get some easy field goals, built on that lead a little bit more and just made it insurmountable for College of Alameda. But getting in the playoffs, playing two playoff games, this is the type of culture that Coach Collins is trying to instill, instill and develop at Alameda. And I mean, with a team with a roster with only two sophomores on it, everybody most likely coming back. It's JC. You never know. You never know. But it's something for them to build on for future, like you said. But we go back, and this is for players and coaches. Carper, or Carper had a opportunity for just a dunk, a little donut in the cup of coffee, but he tried to do the old windmill and got jammed on the rim. He hits that, slams that dunk down. Place goes crazy. Alameda's probably, at that point, is ready to go home. So yeah, that was back when it was a 33-point lead. Yes. Since then, things changed a quickly. Lot. They've changed a lot. Columbia going to survive and advance in the playoffs, That's which all. is all you're trying to do. But there's a lot of teachable moments here for the claim jumpers, and like we said, with Alameda having such a young team and them as well, where they can go and, and show this team film from these games all offseason for Alameda. For Columbia, you got a week to get back on track. And I believe it's been about 18 seasons until Santa Rosa, since Santa Rosa's had a trip up here to Columbia to play basketball. Three-point shot on the way, doesn't go, and that's going to be our final score, 76-64. Columbia victorious tonight. We'll be back with more after these messages on NorCal Sports TV. I, no way I can sit here and do a basketball game next week for me.
Finding athletic college scholarships can be an overwhelming task for athletes. It's essential to utilize experts and former college coaches who know the ins and outs of college recruiting. At Recruiting Boost, we help prospective student athletes navigate the recruiting process from start to finish, ultimately helping them earn scholarship opportunities. We don't rely on cold emails or large databases. Instead, we have direct contact with college coaches. Contact us today. Coach had a big lead. We're always looking for lessons learned, correct? He had a big lead, but was impressed on the defensive game plan and defending the paint, especially early on. I think it really frustrated Alameda. Yeah, I think the first, I don't know, 30 minutes of the game, they had 25 points, and then they poured it on that last 10. Um, we got a little sloppy. We missed free throws. But at the end of the day, you know, we just try to have one more point than the other team. We don't care how we do it. There's always things to work on, so it's a today's a good day. You could see them. I wasn't at your practices, but I could hear the message of what was sent was defending the pain and seeing so often that there's four pairs of feet, sometimes five, inside the paint, and making Alameda when they're going to go inside play with traffic, and you know that frustrates the big men. No, I mean we're trying to load it up in there. We have the best shot blocker in probably the country, not just the state. Uh, That's why I came up here for the Wilson Burgers. Yeah. I digress. Go ahead, Coach. <laughs> yeah, and so he did a good job. And I felt like Landis Spivey and Keith Shakes went in there with their length and really did a good job on the guys that were bigger than them. Um, they showed a lot of grit. And we have to win on that end of the floor. So when we are missing free throws or we are turning the ball over and it's, it gets a little sloppy, we could still win the game if we're solid on that end. So you've got Santa Rosa coming to town. I'll be right back here with the rest of our crew on Saturday night. And I know... Everything was focused on them, but you know what kind of job that Coach McMillan does at Santa Rosa and what type of uh, team that they are? No, he's a Hall of Fame coach. I mean, he was a hell of a player. Um, I think he's been to the final eight, like eight out of the last ten years or something like that. So it'll be my first time competing against him. I'm really excited about it. It will be an honor. Those guys are loaded over there. They won a really good conference. They're going to be chomping at the bit. So uh, I look forward to the competition. Coach Hoyt getting the win over the College of Alameda. They'll be hosting Santa Rosa next week. I'll send it back over to Jeremy. All right, Chris, thank you. Again, final score here, 76-64 tonight as Columbia wins in the second round of the CCAA Regional Playoffs in advance to next Saturday night's game against Santa Rosa Junior College right here live at 7 o'clock on NorCal sports tv for our crew our director dion i color guy chris babcock i'm jeremy hurtado thanks for joining us and we'll be back again next saturday night live on norcal sports tv we'll see you then